Hello, welcome to Bob's Dungeon. My name is Bob. I'll be your host. One of the interesting parts about playing in a fantasy role-playing game is playing a magic user, being able to cast spells. A lot of the core books for different fantasy games have a large selection of spells for you to choose from for your characters, and then they put out different supplements and aids to expand upon the list of spells that you can choose from. Then you have third-party publishers that print other books with even more spells that you could add to your games. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video, is one of those books. So we're going to talk about The Tome of Mighty Magic. The Tome of Mighty Magic has 96 pages and was published in 1982 by North Pole Publication. It was reprinted later on in 1992, and that reprint only had 48 pages and was published by Game Science. The artwork in this book is all in black and white. It's pretty cartoonish. So let's go ahead and look at that artwork. The artwork in this book is all in black and white, with a lot of the pictures in this book coming off as looking cartoonish, and all of the pictures looking nothing but weird, but it all gives the book its own sort of charm. The book might not be very big, but it's got a lot of spells in it. The spells in this book, they go all the way up to 20th level spells, which is weird because in most fantasy role-playing games, the spell level doesn't go up that high. But it's got a system for that, sort of. It's very rules-light as far as explaining a lot of things, but it does explain the spells that are in the book. In the beginning of the book, they give you a uh, short little blurb about some adventurers that found the spells and how they've put them into this tome for you to look at. Probably take it from somebody's personal campaign. Don't know. And the meat of the book is almost exclusively just spells. Nothing but. The very back of the book, it's got two indexes. The first index lists all the spells by alphabetical order, and it gives you the page number and tells you who created the spell. And then after that, there's a second index that lists all the spells in order of level. After the two indexes, you have a couple of blank pages that's labeled new spells at the top of the page, I guess for you to create your own spells. The book is definitely full of a lot of information for you as far as new spells go. The way it works is you can obtain these spells normally, but all the spells that are level 15 and up have to be bestowed upon you by a god. And that's kind of nifty. There's more explanation to it than that, but it's only like a page of explanation in this little bitty book. So, let me, let me read a couple of these spells for you so you can get an idea of kind of what you can find in here. <clears throat> There's a spell called Easy Catch. It's a first level spell, which makes it easy for you to catch fish. There's a spell in here called Cure Nausea, which could come in handy. <laughs> it's a second level spell. There is a spell called Flower Power, which is a second level spell, and it's basically a beautification spell. <laughs> um, there's a spell for locating water. It's a second level spell. Let's see. Oh, here's a neat one. Um, 
Tablins Regenerating Mushroom. This is a spell that creates a giant mushroom that you can eat on. And it will supply you with food. Some of the spells in here are just really goofy, and some of them are way overpowered. Here's a spell. It's a third level spell. It's called My What a Large Helmet You Are Wearing. And basically it just enlarges your helmet, uh, whoever you cast it on. And it's kind of goofy. There's a fifth level spell called Steely Termites, which conjures up little creatures that eats people's armor and weapons, kind of like a rust monster. There's a sixth level spell called Fire Maze, and this spell can be cast, the caster can cast this spell. Up to ten creatures are caught in the maze that cause all inside to lose 10% of their current hit points rounded down for each round inside as a result of fire damage. Creatures must make saving throw at a minus one to negate. That's kind of icky. Oh, there's a nice one. Ida's Mighty Mojo at 6th level. The victim of this spell will suffer a minus 4 to hit, save, and a penalty of 4 on armor class. All, <laughs> all opponents of the victim will gain a bonus of 4 in these areas. Uh, is Mass Fumble which is 6th level. Uh, like I said, there is a lot of strange spells in here. Some of them are just goofy. Some are way overpowered. <coughs> Once you get up in the really big levels on the spells, you can do things like create your own plane and alter time and space just weird stuff but all in all this is a pretty decent book as you can see mine's got some damage from something got spilled on it and I didn't know and but it still works which brings me to three questions would I play a character using some of these spells in this book yeah, I would. There are some pretty nifty spells in there that I wouldn't mind using as a player character. One of them, you can summon a bartender that'll pop into existence, mix you a drink, serve it to you, and then leave. <laughs> I could get use out of that. Would I allow these spells in a game I run? Some of them. I think I'd pick and choose which ones. The book is kind of old so you'd have to modify it depending on what edition of the game you're going to put these spells into would i recommend this book yeah i would even if you don't use any of the spells in this book for your game the book is just a fun read to see some of the craziness that's in it and that's really all i got to say about the tome of mighty magic thank you for joining me at this look at the Tome of Mighty Magic, and hopefully you'll join me next time when we'll talk about something else. Bye.